Tonight, evidence that could point to the cause of the Columbia crash. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Bolton and I'm Laura Evans. Thanks for joining us. While the investigation is just beginning, NASA says it's looking at several scenarios to find what happened in the skies over Texas yesterday. Engineers believe just before disintegration, the space shuttle Columbia experienced an abnormal rise in temperature. Meanwhile, today, a second astronaut's helmet was found in a Texas field. Crews are combing for debris in a path stretching from eastern Texas to Louisiana. All of this as the country mourns in its own way, the loss of seven heroes. And tonight we have team coverage starting with Fox Eyes Bob Barnard in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Bob? Well, it may be months before investigators know exactly what happened to Columbia, but it's clear they're honing in on the orbiter's left wing and wheel well as trouble spots. The reality of what happened yesterday is starting to sink in. All along the Florida Space Coast, the signs are subtle but clear. This is not a typical Sunday. At the Kennedy Space Center, flowers and quiet tears surround the giant astronauts' memorial. We thought we needed to do something to, sh to share our feelings and our sorrow. Soon, seven new names will be engraved in the black granite, which stands to remind us of the dangers of spaceflight. We lost them, but we didn't lose them in haste because it was their dream. I think all astronauts know the risk of the duties that they take. It says rest in peace from Priscilla Gonzalez. At Mission Control in Houston, shuttle program manager Ron Didimore says investigators will try to learn whether foam insulation damaged heat tiles on Columbia's left wing 80 seconds after launch January 16th. Damage to tiles designed to prevent the orbiter from burning up on reentry. The impact damage to the vehicle uh, was not determined. Uh, we believe that at the velocity that it was shed from the tank and at the incident angle that it, that it hit the bottom of the orbiter, that it did not represent uh, any significance to us from a safety point of view. Investigators say they are trying to recover crucial flight data from the final 32 seconds before Mission Control lost contact with Columbia. NASA officials say heat sensors in the orbiter's left wing and inside its left wheel well indicated a troubling rise in temperature moments before the heat sensors shut off. Investigators also say just before Columbia disintegrated, its fuselage experienced a sharp and sudden rise in temperature, followed by increasing drag on the spacecraft, which caused its flight system to adjust its path. Columbia was out of control. The vehicle was uh, reacting to a, an increased drag on the left-hand side. The flight control system was countering that drag by trying to command the vehicle to roll to the right-hand side. Some in Congress are questioning whether NASA's shuttle program was underfunded and understaffed, factors that could have contributed to the Columbia disaster. We need to absolutely renew our commitment to NASA. This is the time to say we are not going to continue cutting this budget. It's been cut 40 percent over the last decade. Sources within the Bush administration say the president is proposing to increase NASA's budget by half a billion dollars next fiscal year. It's currently 15 billion dollars. In the meantime, NASA has grounded its shuttle fleet until its investigation can determine why Columbia was destroyed. At the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, Bob Barnard, Fox 5 News. Bob, thank you. A special federal commission will conduct an independent investigation. Retired Navy Admiral Harold Gaiman will head that commission. He also led the Pentagon's inquiry into the bombing of the USS Cole. Right? The trail of debris covers 500 square miles, and by recovering all those pieces, investigators believe they can recreate just how the shuttle ripped apart. Helmets, computer chips, insulation, they stretch from Texas to Louisiana. Fox News Will Thomas caught up with investigators tackling the 1,200 locations of evidence just in the tiny East Texas County of Nacogdoches. Right now, much of the investigation is centered right here in Nacogdoches, Texas, where shuttle debris pelted the area on Saturday. We now have confirmation from NASA that remains from several of the astronauts have been discovered all in the East Texas area. And because the retrieval process is only just beginning, it could be some time before this is all wrapped up. It's just right up the road. Jay Porter's yard is littered with debris from the shattered space shuttle Columbia. Still shell-shocked, he recalls the distinct booms when it came down. The house just like an earthquake or something. I mean, just shook the whole house. 
A short drive to the edge of his Nacogdoches property, more pieces are found, and as our camera was rolling, a neighbor discovers piece. even more. You find another one? It's another piece of metal, scarred with burn marks. Neighbors scarred with memories. If I looked out the window and I said, no, it can't be no tall neighbor. I said, we fit to be attacked. That something is, is, is not right here. Authorities are securing much of the debris, but with more than 1,200 debris sites and fewer than 130 officers guarding them, officials have to immediately determine what's most significant. We have recovered a harness uh, from obviously one of the seats in the cockpit. Uh, that's something that, that's quite significant. Federal investigators are now combing through thick brush where human remains are being discovered. A second astronaut's helmet is also among the newest discoveries. As you can see, it's mostly intact. A small patch is another reminder of the Columbia disaster and the lost crew. And take a look at this piece. It measures more than eight feet long. God protected us. Betty and Fred Emerson found 13 separate shuttle pieces on their property. The local fire department outlined this one with spray paint. A tire marks this metal object embedded in the ground and a plastic bottle sits beside what could be a portion of a shuttle window. See the screws, their heads are, are still on the outside of the ring there. But or perhaps it was blown out. It, it sure looks like it. At this point, the primary focus will be to tag and bag any pieces of the Space Shuttle Columbia discovered on school property. Now, because that process is only just beginning, local officials here tell us several schools in the area will likely be closed indefinitely. Again, the process only just beginning. The fear is that some child may pick up a piece of this debris and then get sick. That is the very latest from Nacogdoches, Texas. I'm Will Thomas. Now back to you. Now you heard the remains from some of the seven astronauts have been recovered in the wreckage. Those remains will be transported to Dover Air Force Base. Dover's mortuary has unique capabilities to identify remains and examine them for potentially harmful materials. Dover handled the bodies of the seven Challenger victims 17 years ago. Church services around the region were filled today with worshipers searching for a message of faith. No matter their religion, the faithful joined in one voice today to honor the seven fallen astronauts. Fox Eyes Jennifer Davis continues our team coverage tonight. One day after all eyes were riveted to the skies in shock as the space shuttle Columbia broke apart, many again looked toward heaven, this time for comfort. I was sad because of the tragedy, but I'm at peace because I believe they are at peace. The Archbishop consoled Catholics at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. He told the congregation he believes the astronauts surely had a sense of God after flying at great speed through his universe. I am sure that when tragedy came and they met him face to face, they had already seen his works and had already made peace in his, in his presence. They gathered to mourn and pray at the National Cathedral. Seven brave men and women lost their lives yesterday. And the whole service is restructured at the congregation at Jericho City of Praise. <laughs> to honor the seven lives cut tragically short. As folks gather for memorial services here at this Hindu temple in Lanham, Maryland, they speak with pride about the first Indian-born astronaut. Many who attend here actually knew her. She was very bright, very friendly. And when he heard about the shuttle failure yesterday, he was very much uh, upset about it. A week ago at the Sri Siva Vishnu Temple, hearts swelled with pride because of one astronaut. Now, as they gather for a moment of silence, Hearts break for all seven, and on the Sunday it is clear, regardless of what church you attend, what music you sing, or what religion you claim, all Americans have something in common right now. Together, our souls ache because of this country's latest tragedy. In Atlanta, Maryland, Jennifer Davis, Fox 5 News. The Indian ambassador to the United States was among those gathered at the Hindu temple in Maryland this afternoon to honor the Columbia astronauts. And flowers and balloons are placed outside the Israeli embassy in Northwest tonight. Many of the items a tribute to Ilan Ramon, who was on board the shuttle Columbia. He was the first Israeli astronaut. Ramon is survived by his wife and four children. All live in Tel Aviv. 
Do be sure to stay with Fox 5 News for continuing coverage. We will bring you updates tonight and tomorrow morning. Brian.